Gentlemen, welcome back to another Treat Especial Mount Up or Dismount, depending on the disposition of your better three carters. We are taking this show on the road. I don't know much about art, but I know what I like, and I like uh, 1961 vintage fork and lift trucks, automatic brand. We are going to have a look at trouble shooting one of these. Sounds like my kind of torture. Oh, fuck yeah, boys, that's how we do it. Just tell this was used someplace to make plug nickels squeezed out of pennies. And you get the sneaking suspicion of these old girls. You might not be the first one to stick your probe in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, crusty. First, though, we gotta do a mise en place. Now, you get into the senior parts of the world, you gotta kind of mark your territory right off the hop. So, we're gonna do the mise en place. Most importantly, here's the thing I didn't know what the fuck I'd need, so I brought everything. It's beer o'clock somewhere, boys. Maybe start off. Ah, not the rattler. Too expensive. This, uh, holy schlitz. Seeing as how this old girl was built at the height of America's power, I brought my, oh yeah, Gucci purse full of imperial wrenches. These are beautiful. Old, old. Made in Canada. You can't get that anymore. You barely get snap-on still made in the States, I think. I, uh, actually, I'm going to make a second. There's going to be an addendum to the dedendum on this one. I'm not going to go through all the tools here. We'll get right into the beer drinking. <laughs> Troubleshooting. First off the hop, you got to make sure that you're talking the same language. The complaint is it's got no reverse. It's got forward. It's got no reverse. It just gives a little clunk. 90% of the problems on gear is the operator. It's between the driver's seat and the steering wheel. Loose wing nut on the steering wheel, they say. So we got to make sure, we got to confirm that that is the problem. And a lot of times, the problem with the operator is the machine is not doing what he expects it to do, but his expectations are wrong. The machine isn't designed to do that in the first fucking place. I think it's pretty safe to say that a fork and a lift should go in reverse. That's idiot check the first. Idiot check the second. Reboot the fucking thing. Okay, so here's how it works. We got big monster lead acid batteries underneath of the seat. And they gotta get connected up. Now you look at those. Somebody's been in there trying to scrape them up to get better contact. But you can see the pitting in here. I mean the thing, how old is the thing? 50 years old. 60 years old almost. Yeah, look at that. So right there is suspect, high resistance. But what we gotta do is measure what the battery voltage is. Okay, so we take our meter, and to be sure here, we're doing everything belt and suspenders wise. We make sure that we're in the right, and we make sure we have continuity there. Continuity, perfect. Continuity just means that there's a circuit between one lead and the other. So because the one lead is on the other lead, we have continuity. So we put it in voltage DC. This is auto ranging and it's a fancy meter. My fanciest by far. We're gonna go ahead and check. You don't need anything nearly this fancy for this kind of work. We're gonna go ahead and check with the leads, what the voltage is. 36 volts DC. Might be a little bit low because lead acid batteries at this temperature fully charged should be 12.7 volts. So 12.7 volts times three, three times 0.7 is 21, 2.1, so it should be at 38.1 volts. It's at 36, so a little bit low, but good enough for testing it at the very least. Okay, now we're gonna make connection. I think that's the way it goes. In there nice and tight. That's the other thing you gotta do when you're troubleshooting. Grab stuff. If it pulls apart in your hand, it ain't no fucking good. Remember the rule. Looks like shit. Smells like shit. Tastes like shit. Spit it the fuck out. You gotta connect it. You always wanna do the simplest thing first. So we're just gonna run it and see if we can get it to go in reverse. Maybe it was just one of those things. I had to reboot. Okay, so the forks and the hydraulics are working fine. 
get her in reverse. I'm going to actuate the pedal. So this guy is actuating, and we're getting a little torque, but not enough to actually get the thing moving other than a judder. We are getting an arcing and sparking, which is not a bad thing. So let's put her in forward, see what happens. We don't know anything about this system. So this is the forward contactor. This is the reverse contactor. Both getting fed from the same lead. We seem like we have a lot more torque. And forward, we go right up against the, uh, the stops, the wheel chocks there. So, let's grab our meter. Now this is the interesting part of electrical troubleshooting because voltage is not everything. You can have lots of voltage, but if you have high resistance in the conductors because they're old or crappy, then you don't get enough current. And current is torque. So we are going to measure the current coming through these conductors and see in forward and reverse what we're getting. Okay, here's the forward contact. 123 amps. Nothing to sneeze at. Here's the reverse contact. In frame even. 128 amps. Uh, uh oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> what I was, what I was hoping, well, what I knew in my heart of hearts, which is completely incorrect now. Well, that's isn't that the beauty of YouTube? People say all the time that watching TV now is boring. I'll tell you the reason why, because TV, they know what the ending is before they even start the, the writing. So you're privy to the story after the fact. But YouTube, you're right here with me as the story develops. I don't know what the ending's gonna be. What we gotta, so what I was expecting was there would be lower uh, amps on the reverse. And that would be perfect, at the perfect segue for testing high resistance leads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that because if that had lower amperage, that would mean necessarily the circuit had higher resistance. That would mean that if we checked with a, a voltmeter while it was running, we could see a higher voltage drop on one side and the other. Peel back the foreskin, surprise, surprise, the thing is ooze and schmigma. Sick looking battery, but don't go making problems where there ain't none. You know, break it till it's fixed type deal. Find the root cause and then fix it. So we're not convinced that the battery is suspect yet. It's still, you know, it's <laughs> clearly seen butter days, but it's still putting out enough angry pixies to get this thing to chooch. So let's, uh, we got the Fluke 87 here. We got her on volts. DC. <laughs> one lead over here. Huh? Okay. And then we're going to put one lead right on the contactor in, or maybe the contactor out, which is perfect. And that will measure the voltage drop all the way from the battery to essentially this side of the motor. And then what we can do is swap this guy, put it over here. Do the same thing and that will measure the voltage drop on the other side of the circuit because of course it's a circuit for a reason the pixies need to dance in a circle so we're measuring one half of that circle by doing it here and one half of that circle by clamping it on the negative that's right on the output contact of the forward uh, maybe reverse i can't remember which i will just come over here to the meters i'll set you up you guys watch the meters while I actuate the pedals. It's good to have a helping hand, thank you. There's some weird shit going on there, 13 volts DC. Huh, strange. There should be no load on that whatsoever. I don't know why it's going up to 13 volts. Well, I'll actuate the pedal, oh, maybe because the hour meter is on or something. Let's turn that off. Oh, still the same. Okay, let's go in forward. And see what she reads. Now we're going to measure the second half of the circuit. That was from the positive lead. This is from the negative lead. And I couldn't see that, so I don't know what it was. 
but you'll tell me, I'm sure. That's 22. So that's half of the 36, that makes sense. Kinda, sorta. You never really know, you're always questioning, always questioning. Cortex. Now we're gonna do forward, that was reverse. And there was a three volt drop in one direction and four volt drop in the other. That means seven volt drop through this circuit that only leaves uh, 29 volts for the motor. And in an automotive system, that would not be even close to enough. That would be far too high voltage drop. However, in this system, I don't know fork all about forklifts. So it might, it might be good, but I suspect it's, it's not great. Cordic. Swap this guy around. Now that had about a seven volt drop, three in one direction, four in t'other. other. Same as reverse. Now, I'm not getting, well I get a little bit hangry, so I'm gonna go grub up, get some, uh, buy myself some goat, uh, the usual suspects and have a think about this, the best way to explain it. I know what's going on. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, as I sat waiting for my sleazeburger, it uh, dingled my chingleberries about a patron named Tom but sent me uh, some information request about how to measure. Wow, holy Jesus. This guy sent pictures, I'll put them up. And I gotta paraphrase here, but essentially, he fabric cobbled together butt ends <laughs> electrical wire and it had all the appeal of a hyena doing a unwelcome late term abortion. I never got back to him on how he should test to see if it's a suitable fit for purpose, which of course it isn't. But what, and I'm paraphrasing his email now, what he does in the comfort of his own leather fetish bondage bar is his own affair. So he wanted to know what kind of voltage drop to expect if there was an easy calculation or some sort of thing like this. And he further went on, actually had a very good a layman's understanding of electricity, but was missing the one key ingredient, which was V equals IR. Voltage equals current times resistance. Error. That was a record scratch. A hubris got me right in the arse. Okay, so I got the... Well, I'm editing. I'm editing and a huge glaring fucking ridiculous mistake. It doesn't even fucking make a sense. And then I spend 20 minutes trying to figure it out and convince myself there was no one easier to fool than yourself that uh, what I was saying made a sense. It didn't make a fucking lick of sense. Here's the thing. You, know, you get talking to somebody that's been in the Guggenheim Museum, it kind of goes to your head. I'm a vain and petty man. Uh, you know, you're pulling it so long that you got to start doing this. It's time to just back off. Back off. I done fucked up. So here is the real explanation. And let us never speak of this again. Just consider it a little back from the future here. What we did with <laughs> the forklift. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm wearing gloves because my hands are so red. I'm embarrassed. From the battery, and we were getting weird readings. Why do you think that is? Anyway, I'm not going to go into 20 minutes of explaining it for you because it only takes 30 seconds. You're talking to a bumblefuck, is why. Okay, so what we had was we had a mess of wire going to a switch, running to a motor, and back to the battery. What we wanted to do, we measured the current going to it, 125 amps, but we wanted to measure the voltage drop, and that would tell us. That would indicate to us the condition of the wires and the switch. So what we did was this. We put in a voltmeter here over to here. And we measured the voltage drop under load while it was running. That means we closed this switch. Got a big old, well, when it opens you get the spark. But got a whole bunch of angry pixies flowing and we measured the voltage. The voltage drop was 3 volts. That means in this wire is 3 volts worth of resistance. The thing is, you can't measure the resistance of the wire under load. If you 
have the wire energized and you have your meter in ohms, it either blows up or it faults out. So that is why you need to put it in volts and check the voltage drop. You can't check the ohm resistance under load because there's voltage there, it's gonna blow something up. Okay, so what Tom needs to do is he needs to take his meter here and put it, let's see, where's the little chunk? Okay, so he's gonna stick yonder end into his drill or whatever. And he's gonna stick this end in to the wall. What he needs to do is put a little wire on there, have it poking out so that he can measure, clamp his meter on this one and then clamp his meter on this one. Then when he runs it, he can check the voltage drop of this one conductor in the whole wire. The voltage drop is more than 10% of the, of the total voltage. It's totally far too much. It's going to overheat, uh, burn down the shop f for dog sacks. It's going to burn down all his scumbag friends at the Guggenheim Museum. Oh, he stuck the poking bit into the shocked face of the North American plug, 120 volts, 60 hertz. And we're in the hot there. The small one is the mean bastard. We're into the hot on the one end. Now we'll jam the Milwaukee metal cutting circ saw in there. It's a high, high load with the wire. So now we're measuring the voltage drop. Yeah, under load of the entire wire. Eyes, ears, and move your beers. Contact. So at five, six amps running, we had half a volt of drop. Fuck all in a big ship. So we know this uh, extension cord is just fine for this application. Not gonna overheat. Or the other thing you can do is run it under load and check it with a heat gun, see if there's any hot spots. That's what I would do on account of all those, uh, all those terrible looking connections. That is also why longer extension cords tend to trip the breakers more because the voltage sags. The motor is still trying to put out the same amount of power. If the voltage drops, that means the current needs to increase. Current is what trips breakers. So the voltage sags, it, it, it goes through the big long resistor of the extension cord. The voltage drops, the motor is trying to draw the same amount, the current goes through the roof and the breaker trips. You get the old walk of shame. That there is the jankiest way I know to test it. Uh, be careful not to melt your feelings. I explained why I did it and I explained how I did it, but we're still not at the root cause of the problem. Why this friggin' thing ain't going in reverse? And all signs are pointing to not an electrical problem, but a mechanical problem, which is the old, anytime you don't know what is wrong with something, it's instantly an electrical problem. Now this old girl is a war horse from a bygone age. And I think, as I said, the problem is mechanical. Very likely, what's mechanical on this? Well, the transmission, but it works in forward. So it should work in reverse because it's all the same gearing. It's just the motor what switches leads in order to get uh, forward and reverse. I suspect that the brakes are stuck on. The next step is to, well, get in there and maybe not free up the brakes. If we can drive it forward, then we can get it off of the trailer, get it down on the ground where it's safe and have a look at the brakes. I can only hope that there's no brakes on the small little steer wheels in the back. This thing drives like a boat, it steers from the rear. And there's only brakes in the front. If they're mechanical brakes or hydraulic brakes, I do not know. The royal we are gonna take our leave and leave that hot supper to some poor other SOB, or very likely this SOB just at a different date. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.